Hello Eastvale, this is Don Pettinger. I hope that you are all doing well today considering everything that's going on. One of the big things about our community and the Eastvale Crime Watch and Reporting page is we always try to provide you with factual information so that you can make good decisions. There's too many opportunities to hear rumors, innuendo, or the all famous word fake news. So throughout this COVID-19 coronavirus scare, we've been trying to get all the proper information out to you as soon as possible. Today is no different. We felt it was very important to go get two of our city leaders and talk to them in a candid conversation uh, and with questions and answers back and forth so that you can get a better understanding about what's going on in the city. Today we're going to be talking to uh, Mayor Brandon Plott and our city manager Brian Jones. So I'm going to bring them both on right now. Welcome gentlemen, how are you today? Doing good, Don. Thank you. Thanks for having us on, Don. You bet, gentlemen. So, uh, first question to Brandon. Uh, I noticed you've been doing a lot of news conferences for us and updates. Has anything changed since yesterday when you gave your last uh, update to the community? No, I mean, nothing has changed as far as any mandates as of right now that we know of. Any new mandates, nothing has changed. You know, my, I'm, thank you, by the way, for having us on. Uh, you know, my goal is now to hopefully take this information, which is still relevant at the moment, who knows tomorrow, but, but to take this information and, and hopefully, you know, make it, a, a, you know, customize it to where how it affects Eastville and how it affects us uh, as residents and kind of looking through the various social media outlets uh, through the crime page well, and, and trying to see, uh, you know, hopefully answer some questions that have been going on out there to, to you know, to help kind of customize the information that we also received last night. Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, Brian, uh, knowing that this is going to cost a lot of money, uh, do we have the financial reserves necessary or what we need to move forward as a city? Uh, we do have a very healthy reserve in the city of Eastvale to help weather this uh, coronavirus, uh, COVID-19, and we're monitoring that really closely as well. Uh, Brian, can you also piggyback, uh, you're a city manager expert, uh, can you explain to the public exactly what a state of emergency is? Uh, the state of emergency uh, for the city of Eastville was declared on Tuesday morning uh, by the city council in an emergency city council meeting. Uh, we uh, did that for a number of reasons. It allows uh, for us to have federal and state resources come to our city. It allows us to also mobilize and, and react quicker uh, should we need to procure anything uh, to help our residents and businesses out. So, Mayor Plot, is there anything you want to add to that? No, I, I think I think Brian kind of said it well. I mean, basically what it does is it allows us to seek, you know, uh, potentially seek reimbursements for expenditures related to emergency, right? And, and these, these uh, reimbursements could come from both state and, and federal side as well. So, um, but he's pretty much touched on, on those topics. Very well. Uh, Brandon, uh, a couple days ago, you were talking to the community about uh, when the Riverside County Department of Health let the people know that there was a COVID-19 patient within the city of Eastville. Did you want to add anything to that? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for asking. I, so there's really two nuances. There was actually, I guess there's two nuances to the things that were kind of brought up on, on social media. And so one, one part of it was, hey, where does he live? Uh, you know, where does this person live? Where does, uh, you know, where does, uh, you know, where where can we find uh, more information uh, about the whereabouts? And, and the problem is, is that it, it's this is a, a constitutional privacy right, as well as other state and federal statutes that prohibit the city from leasing any personal information. So we just cannot go down that road whatsoever. Right. But then there's the other kind of nuance that is, um, you know, where where has this individual been? Right. In, in you know, where, where has this person been? Uh, and so we don't as a city and most cities don't have a, a, a public health office. Right. Very few cities have that. So then what happens is, is that if the public health office our county, county public health office is investigating this situation, that jurisdiction then becomes the county. So really questions about whereabouts, where this person has been while he's had a virus, that is really up to the county to decide it's, that is not our jurisdiction to go into. And, and, and not to provide. So it goes and falls in line with the county's jurisdiction. Very good. I think it's important that we add also to the community uh, that some of us have been in contact with the individual 
and he is doing much better. Uh, he appreciates the positive thoughts and prayers from everyone in the community. He's feeling our love, and currently he and his family are being well taken care of and, and don't need anything at this point. So uh, we've done a, a great job. And Wouldn't you agree, Mayor? Yeah, absolutely. And, Don, I just want to add one other thing. Uh, just uh, this person absolutely followed the protocols of what you were supposed to do if, if you were infected. So uh, I think that's that's also being very responsible. I just want to make sure that light is shed. Very good. So, uh, Brian, uh, I want to talk to you about we've noticed recently uh, about the state of California and the federal government uh, extending the tax uh, season uh, for federal income taxes and such. I know you're not a county representative, but can you talk to the people a little bit about uh, county uh, uh, taxes and uh, property taxes? Well, we have reached out to the county executive office and just shared that our residents are concerned uh, about property taxes and, and will there be a grace period? And, and they've heard that concern. And so they're going to probably come out with some information in the future. And when they do, we'll update the community on that. Uh, that's that's very good. I know that that's a, a big thing. Have you heard any more or would like to add anything? I know uh, President Trump talked about people not being evicted uh, during this time. Are you hearing anything about any new legislation in the state of California? They, they're, they are working to make sure that uh, individuals are not evicted out of their homes uh, during this time. Very good. Uh, let's say I've got both of you guys on the screen right now. Uh, I know this is a trying time and I think people are somewhat confused with the aspect of shelter in place or stay at home or martial law and you're hearing all types of uh, different rumors going around exactly what that is. Uh, who'd like to take that one? I can take that one. Stay at home and shelter in place are pretty synonymous with each other. Um, and we just want people to do social distancing. Uh, so we want to encourage you uh, to stay at home for as much as you can. Uh, this does not preclude you from going out for essential services or needs such as going to the grocery store. So there's no need to go stand in line uh, with hundreds of other people um, because the grocery stores are an essential business and they will remain open. Um, and so when you see people out, they could be first responders, they could be people going for essential business services, they could be uh, a number of different uh, doctors or nurses or local government uh, people, uh, or it, they could be manufacturers of health products uh, that are going to work or truck drivers uh, that are going to their job to deliver to all these essential business services. So uh, we're going to have a lot of people out on the road, but we're also encouraging if you don't need to be out, please don't go out. And that's an excellent question. Hey, uh, Brandon, would you talk to him? I know we talked a little bit yesterday about subclasses and explain that. Uh, uh, the subclasses yeah, of essential personnel. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. So, so Brian kind of already alluded to it, but I'll, I'll kind of go into it as well. Is basically. Um, our federal government has basically listed 16 federal critical infrastructure sectors as well as its subsectors that relate to these 16 main sectors. And Brian's already touched on most of them, but it's basically communications, chemical, critical manufacturing, commercial facilities, dams, emergency services. Uh, there's a kind of a long list, water, transportation services, healthcare, government facilities, all these, all these main sectors and its subsectors that support those sectors are basically essential. And so to Brian's point, if, if we were just to touch on uh, food and agriculture, right? Because this is kind of how it could relate to Eastville, if, and how it relates to Costco specifically, because Costco is now dealing with the end users, and so, and our residents specifically. So if we know these are, and this is put together by uh, the CISA, which is the Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security uh, Agency, which is under the Department of Homeland Security, so if we know this is part of our security infrastructure, there's no need to panic to go to the store. This is part of the protocol. These places will remain open. So to put it more in perspective, let's avoid having to go to Costco at 6 a.m. to open at 8 a.m. They're going to be there tomorrow and the next day and the next day. 
my suggestion is we continue to do our normal grocery shopping that we would, right? Follow the simple protocol. This is the standard in place, right? And, and let's not let's not be out there exposing ourselves uh, uh, to, to the virus, right? Or potentially could be exposing ourselves. It's better to to follow the mandates, not have to go out, right? And that's what they're for. But but rest assured, these. Uh, 16 federal critical infrastructure, but specifically the food and ag, they're going to stay open. So I, I, there's no need to, uh, you know, let's 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 remain calm and be able to do that, right? So and just kind of kind of go with our routine, um, I, and that kind of maybe helps answer some of the questions I've seen on social media as well. And and also there was a lot of the workers. I heard a lot of questions about people working. Well, kind of the Brian already alluded to. It's there's no, nowhere the city can, we cannot mandate people to stop working, especially if they're working somewhere else. Because the because basically our country needs these people working to for sustainability. So it, it's crucially important that we understand that. If you want more information about this, I'll, I'll just kind of give you the site. Um, actually, find it here. It is okay. It's www.cisa.gov, and then if you go to the link, click on the critical critical infrastructure sector. You can kind of get all the information as far as what is uh, a, a critical sector. For the security of uh, of our nation. Very good. That that does a great job of answering that, Brandon. Uh, we greatly appreciate that, uh, Brian. As we come back to you, uh, and we we look at our city, uh, do we have the resources necessary as far as fire or police? Can you share some of those conversations that you've had with uh, our law enforcement and how they're prepared to respond? Well, I, I'm in daily, if not twice or three times a day, conversations with both our Riverside Sheriff's Office uh, deputies as well as CAL FIRE uh, firefighters and uh, getting updates on how they're doing with their resources at their staffing levels. And we are uh, fully staffed in the city of Eastvale and um, we have all the necessary resources at this time to serve our residents. Very good. It, it is important, though, should you call 911, that you communicate if you're showing symptoms of the coronavirus or COVID-19 so that the dispatcher can let the people know. And then when they show up to your door or your business, that you also repeat that information to them. Very. That, that's very good information. Uh, Brandon, I know that you have gone out along with uh, Brian and talked to some of our local businesses uh, will you share some about uh, about that as far as how you guys have been working with them to try to set up hours for our seniors and things like that? Yeah, well, to to give you know to give credit that that was our entire council along with Brian as well. So uh, that that you know that's all our council members uh, had reached out to uh, you know I don't know if you saw Councilman Todd Rigby's video uh, that he did at the Masala House right, uh, and which was an awesome video. If you haven't seen it, please check it out. It, it's very uh, very helpful as far as you know a, a, a private sector company doing their part to, to help to help our senior citizens and to help to help our people um, but yeah we have reached out to every uh every grocery store chain in eastville and i believe there's about seven of them and to basically uh to ask if, if they would help provide for senior citizens and in some way shape or form or another whether it's policy driven from their corporate office or whether it's more arbitrary uh where it's hey, let's allow senior citizens to go first in this line. And, and typically the, from what we've heard and what I've seen and the feedback is that most residents are, are allowing that to happen or it's just policy driven that senior citizens go first. Either way, our our grocery store partners uh, particularly are coming together uh, to to step up to the plate. And we appreciate uh, greatly that, that, that partnership. Very good, very good. Uh, as we continue to, to look through this, I know that there may become residents uh, within our city who need help. I know on the crime page we have the emergency operation giving going on, and we're, we've seen probably 350 people uh, connected where things are being given out of abundance and love uh, to help our community. And I, I, I know that uh, our city manager today has been in contact with He's trying to reach out to every single one of our houses of worship uh, and people of that nature. I'd like to uh, ask Brian to talk a little bit about that. So it, it's amazing. Our houses houses of worship and, and their leadership have all stepped up to reach out to the city of Eastvale and our city council 
to say we are here to support this community. We're here to pray for our community. We are here uh, to uh, serve our community, our entire community. So if you have a need, uh, you can reach out through the city of Eastvale. You can reach out to a church in, in uh, directly, or you can reach out to the Crime Watch page. But we will connect you with the people willing to serve and help you. We have churches that are willing to go shopping for you. We have churches that are willing to listen to you if you have anxiety or fear or depression or or whatever you might, however you might be processing your feelings and thoughts and emotions right now. Um, they are all available uh, and willing to help you through this process. Uh, that That's great. Uh, and would you talk a little too about their services and things, how they've adjusted that, Brian? They've pretty much told you. So, so th this is also a great time of innovation. Uh, and we're seeing churches go uh, on, on Facebook Live. We're seeing churches uh, do a number of different ways where they're not bringing everybody together, but they're also giving people the opportunity to hear uh, their word and message uh during their normal service times. And so it's a great way to get out and connect with our churches and you can actually go out and experience a whole bunch of different churches uh, um, and, and hear what they're sharing with their uh, their church members. Very good. Uh, Brandon, would you take a moment and just you know reach out to people about kindness during this point uh, and how we yeah. treat each other during this tough time? Yeah, you know, I, I think the last time, Don, I think it was Monday, you know, we did we did the last kind of the, the Q and A, kind of what we're doing right now. Is there was something I remember mentioned towards the end where I said, you know, mandates will get a little more stiffer and a little more strict. Well, that was the case, right? And I said every time something gets a little stricter, a little more difficult, you know, we start to get a little more uneasier and we get a little more, um, and kind of start building up barriers. And so, it's really important to self kind of check yourself a little bit. And to say, okay, no, that's me just kind of being a little nervous. And to really step out of our shell and say, okay, what can we do? It's And I tell you, if you ever want to feel good, I, I said it before, and I don't want to sound overly redundant, but if you ever want to feel good about yourself, right? And then it's it's charity. Charity is is the greatest love, right? And, and, and this time, we need to be as charitable as possible. And I don't mean necessarily giving things, but just simply being kind, get, just being giving in good, kind words. If people are – people – are, emotion, are struggling emotionally, right? And, and in, other, in other parts, right? Whether it's emotionally or financially or, or you know, need, needing a material or whatever it is, or supply. Um, but let's be charitable in all aspects. Um, I, the, the great thing is, it's not that we aren't. I'm just trying to reiterate that message. There's been hundreds of stories already. And Don, you have access to these stories of people giving, I mean, the grocery stores stepping up to play, our, our church groups coming to the table, right? So all these different things we're coming together. I just want to make sure that when things do get even tougher, because they, it's probably it's possible um, that we remember that how we are acting now, that we continue to keep our composure and act it the same way a week from now or two weeks from now, right? It's very important to do that. So um, just remember just to keep kind. And, and we do that for me. I know for myself, whenever I do something, and times can be difficult. And it's, it's extremely challenging, um, but it, it works. Man. It may, I always feel much better. So, Th thank you, Brandon. That that shares a lot, uh, Brian. I'm just curious if you could kind of tell the community. Uh, I know the orders have gone out from City Hall. Exactly what City Hall is doing right now. What services are available at City Hall, and if you can talk a little about uh, the parking and citations and everything like that. If you could share that with people. Look at this time at the doors however we're serving you electronically and telephonically and, and so if you need something from the city of Eastvale uh, you can go on any of our social media channels uh, you can go um, you can email us uh, you can recall us uh, the, the numbers are printed on the door if you get to the door and you need to call us um, we're forwarding calls to people during business hours uh, so that they can uh, respond and if we don't pick up the phone, uh, uh, please just leave a message because we're probably helping somebody else at the time uh, and we will get back to you. Uh, we've uh, currently suspended uh, street sweeping parking enforcement in our neighborhoods. Uh, um, 
We encourage people to still park on their driveways as much as possible because we're still sweeping the streets, but we know that there's an extra amount of people at home during the day, whether they're home from school, uh, from colleges, or from work. And so we want to give a little grace in our community, and we have the city council and I have uh, made that decision uh, to suspend uh, parking enforcement. Um, and, um, you know, my entire team is here and, and ready uh, to serve you. Um, so if there's, uh, we, we are going to reduce, most likely uh, on Monday, we're gonna reduce the number of people in City Hall, uh, but we are equipping them with the technology uh, to be able to work from home when they're not at City Hall um, so that we can continue to provide the services to our residents and businesses during this uh, time. So it, it's important for people to remember that while the city has relaxed the parking regulations on street sweeping day, that's not necessarily everything, handicap, uh, red zones and things like that, right? That's correct. If, if you are uh, parking in a disabled parking and you don't have a placard, you will still be cited for that or you still could be cited. You still should not be parking in red zones or in handicap uh, parking spaces or um, uh, blocking ADA ramps at intersections, uh, that kind of thing. Very good. So gentlemen, uh, do either one of you have anything else that uh, you would like to add as we get ready to wrap up? We're coming right up here on about 20 minutes and I want to keep this precise. So. Uh, people will tune in as we go through. Brandon, you were uh, raising your hand so politely there like a homeschool student right now. Uh, I should say like an in-home school student. Yeah, in-home student. Aren't they all right now? They're a home student right now. Um, no, thank you, Don. Yeah, I, you know, I've, I've uh, been also, you know, reaching out. And, and again, I and the same thing. All our council members have been phenomenal in this process as well. And they've been very, uh, very active in, in outreach to the community. Um uh, one uh, that we've done, and, and one of the things that, that, that I've been kind of going to is visiting a lot of our, our local business. This was earlier last week and then earlier this week, and whether it was like some of our local restaurants or our local businesses. And right now, the the we are allowed to basically take out our dine out. So the one thing I want to reiterate is, you know, when we talk about family, we, we constantly think of residents, right? And 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 our and us and you know, our, our agency partners and developers and whatnot, but um, our, our, our small businesses, all right, and our business here in Eastville are family. And I can tell you, that, you know, it, it's tough for them. You know, they chose to invest in the business here and chose to, to create an environment where we can have options to do things. And uh, especially of recently, we've, we've had a good influx of restaurants coming into ESO because they saw opportunity. Um, if you are planning to take out or dine out, Choose some of your business. Choose some of those restaurants to to, to dine out at. Um, they're struggling a little bit, and so uh, we want to support them. And remember, these are that more than likely supported your children's little league baseball team or your girls softball team, basketball team, football team, soccer team. Let's return the favor and, and do that. And that's kind of my my uh, ask if, if if I can so do so and, and ask that. Very good, Brian. Do you have any uh, other words for our citizens? And yeah. residents, I, I saw something earlier, and it said PPI: uh, focus on perspective, being patient, and innovation. And uh, start with being grateful about uh, your health and your family, and spending this time uh, to do things that maybe you don't, you've been too busy to do. Um, also, uh, practice patience, patience with each other, uh, patience with your family members. Uh, we need to wait this out. Um, and we need to do the right thing uh, with social distancing, and that's the proper move. But also use this time as a time of innovation. If your business is struggling, or if you're if you need to uh, go to church online, or if um, you need to create remote work infrastructure, these are all things that we don't normally all do on a regular basis. And so uh, this is a time to be creative and innovative, and and we're going to come out of this stronger as a community. And um, but we're going to need to be patient through this time, uh, patient with each other, and and that's a really important thing. And and to practice that uh, time of gratitude, because during a time of challenge is when our character and our leadership is defined. Absolutely, gentlemen, I can't thank you enough both for coming on today. 
Uh, we do have an amazing city council, and these are the two individuals that happen to be speaking right now on behalf of our city. Uh, we, we have great council members, and they are out there doing everything they can, along with our entire city staff, our law enforcement and firefighters, to do what we can uh, to make it through this as a city. As a city. So on behalf of the citizens, we'd like to thank all of you who are out there every day helping us. We will get through this. If there is more uh, information that comes that we need to get out to you, we, and we will do that for you. We'd like to remind you, I know it seems cliche right now, but wash your hands and keep your hands away from your face. Uh, I saw a very funny one, and we need some laughs during this time. It was a picture of a dog handing their human handler one of those dog collars and says, this is for your own good. You need to stop touching your face. So there's a lot of funny things there, but there's a lot of uh, good in that also. So we need to wash our hands, be nice to each other, and please, please try to stay home if at all possible. Limit your contact. Uh, Mayor Plot, City Manager Jones. Uh, I thank both of you for coming on. You guys have been great. Oh, wait, wait. Here we go. We've got to go back to Brandon. If you, if, if you tell a joke, make sure it's an inside joke. Okay. In, inside. For the mandate. Uh, oh, yeah. It has to be an inside joke. Isn't that pretty good? Brent, uh, Brian, did you want to... It was cheesy. It was cheesy, but I had to do it. It was a softball. Uh, Brian, any final words from you? you? You're doing a great job advertising Perel in the background. Well, we, we have these disinfectants, and we're encouraging everybody to wash your hands. Uh, um, and uh, our community enhancement and safety team is out patrolling our neighborhoods and our businesses uh, to be an extra set of eyes. And if you see something, say something. Um, and that's an important thing in our community. If you see something that shouldn't be going on, communicate it with us, communicate it with uh, RSO, communicate it with CAL FIRE, and, and we will figure out uh, the best course of response. Thank you, gentlemen. Greatly appreciate it. East Bell, stay strong. We are an awesome community. We will come through this on the other side. Uh, until next time, uh, stay strong, East Bell. Stay classy. We'll see you in a couple days.